Do you get down to the floor or not so much? There are a lot of different reasons why people don't get down to the floor. And today we're going to talk about why being able to get down to the floor is important and how to go about working on being able to do it. We're also going to talk about how to get up if you've had a fall and some exercises to do to work on strength and balance that will make getting up and down easier to do. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor and a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. In the fitness classes that I teach, I work with a variety of people, some who can get down onto the floor and some who don't for a variety of reasons some of which include knee replacements or other knee injuries like having a torn meniscus. Many people also have painful arthritis. And for some people, there's concern about being able to get up again once they get down to the floor. It's challenging to work with limitations in your body. I know from personal experience. I have rheumatoid arthritis and I have regular pain and swelling in my hands and my feet. There are days when I really struggle to grip things. And if it weren't for my husband and some strong teenagers, I worry a bit that I might starve for fear of not being able to open jars or even the milk. The basic point is that there are a lot of reasons why people don't get down to the floor. From an exercise standpoint, it's still totally possible to get a good workout and to build strength in both muscles and bones, even doing glute work while sitting in a chair. If you don't get down to the floor, I still strongly encourage you to work on building strength because strength will help you to improve your bone health and your health overall. Being able to get down to the floor is still an important skill to work on for a few reasons. So let's take just a moment to talk about why we should work on being able to do this. Part of being able to get down to the floor is being able to get back up again. Life has lots of unexpected things that happen. My sister has a baby and a puppy, and one day my mom decided to go for a walk with my sister, her baby, and the puppy. The puppy, who was on her leash, ran right in front of my mom, causing my mom to trip and fall, which was rather terrifying for her. Thankfully, she didn't break anything, but she found herself on the ground really unexpectedly, where she needed to be able to get up again. Something like this could actually happen to any of us. Trips happen with life's twists and turns. And the better able that we are to adapt to what life throws at us, the more likely we're going to be able to stay safe when unexpected things do happen and also to reduce our risk of having a fracture. There might be another reason why we have to get down onto the floor. Maybe we drop something that needs picking up or maybe somebody spills something and we need to clean it up. The reasons could go on, but it's important to work on being able to adjust for life's curveballs. According to the CDC, most falls, four out of five falls, don't actually result in an injury. That is really good news and something that we should be aware of. It's easy to become afraid of falling, especially with osteoporosis. When we become afraid of falling, we often become less active and limit the way that we move, which actually increases the risk of having a fall with an injury. There are some things that make us more likely to fall and more falls does increase the chance of having an injury. With osteoporosis, we tend to think of broken bones as the bad result of a fall and they are. Hip fractures are serious business that we definitely wanna avoid. Wrist fractures can also happen as the result of a fall because we naturally wanna throw our arms out to protect ourselves. Keep doing this if you fall because it's a lot easier to heal from a wrist fracture than it is a hip fracture. Just saying. Broken bones are not the only potential injuries that can happen from falling. Head injuries like concussions or brain bleed outs are also possible. I have a dear friend who fell and hit her head and then ended up with a brain bleed out. When she first went to the doctor, they sent her home because they didn't realize what had happened. And then later on that evening, she had to go back into the emergency room because she could tell that something was really wrong. If you have a fall and you're concerned about a potential head injury, don't wait. Get it checked out and advocate for yourself. Get your doctor to check you over thoroughly. 
Here's a list of some of the things in life that can increase the likelihood of having a fall. I share this list from the CDC because when we know what risk factors we have, then we can take steps to mitigate at least some of them. The list includes having lower body weakness, vitamin D deficiency, that is not having enough vitamin D in your system, difficulties with walking and balance, use of medicines such as tranquilizers, sedatives, or antidepressants. Even some over-the-counter medicines can affect balance and how steady you are on your feet. Vision problems, foot pain or poor footwear, home hazards or dangers such as broken or uneven steps, and throw rugs or clutter that can be tripped over. I also want to add to this list that if you take three or more medications, any medications, this also tends to increase the risk of having a fall. The good thing is that this list has a lot of things that we can do something about. We can work on increasing our lower and upper body strength. We can make sure that we are getting enough vitamin D. This may necessitate checking with your doctor to see where you are at with vitamin D. We can work on practicing balance daily. We can have a look at our medications and see if anything can potentially be changed or even eliminated. That may or may not be possible, but it's worth having a look to see. We can get glasses to help with vision and turn on the lights when it's dark, even if we need to make a potty stop in the middle of the night. Lights are good. We can get shoes that better support our feet. We can work on getting someone to help with home repairs and to reduce clutter and trip hazards in our homes. That helps with most of the things on the CDC's list. There's a lot that we can do. So from here, let's switch gears a bit and go over the logistics of how to actually go about getting up and down. I have a few different ways to do this that I'd like to share with you. First is the method that does not use a chair. This first method for getting down to the floor is appropriate for someone who can get up and down from the floor, but this is just an osteoporosis safe way to do so. So to do this, we're gonna come through the hip hinge. My feet are at least as wide as hip width apart, maybe slightly wider. I'm gonna bend both knees and stick my behind out. And then from here, I'm gonna bring one leg down to the floor and then my other leg down to the floor. And then from here, I can make my way into a tabletop position. So I could choose to clean something up off the floor or if I'm outside, I can use this method to pull weeds and all of this keeps my back nice and straight, safe from coming into a rounded shape. So to get up from the floor from here, we're actually gonna come back through the hip hinge. You can come up to a high kneeling position and then lift one leg up and then the other leg up coming through the hip hinge, making your way up to a standing position. Let's go over the second way to get down to the floor. So if you have hardwood floors like I do, I really encourage you to ha get some sort of pad like this. I picked this up inexpensively at Amazon. I don't remember how much. Um, they also sell them at gardening stores. And this is lightweight and easy and I haul it all over my house. I use it when cleaning, it's great. Um, so I'm gonna actually drop this right in front of the chair. If you don't happen to have a pad, you could use a blanket or a towel to create some extra padding for underneath knees. And then we're gonna come through the hip hinge. Bend both knees, stick your behind out. This allows your back to stay nice and straight, which keeps you safe with osteoporosis. And then bring your hands down to the chair. From here, use your stronger leg. If you have a stronger leg, use your stronger leg to come down to the floor. And then if you have one knee, say, that doesn't come down to the floor, you could slide that leg out to the side. Um, you could put most of your weight, you could slide down onto your side, making your way all the way down to the floor. Figure out what works in your body, bringing one leg down and then making the necessary adjustments in your body. Experiment with this a little bit to figure out how to get down here. And then you could do some sort of cleaning task. You could lay all the way down onto the floor to be able to do some exercises while you're here or anything else that you wanted to do while you're down here. So to get back up from the floor, from this position, 
Go ahead and slide over onto your side, making your way up into a seated position. And you can kind of slide your way back over to your knee pad. We're going to assume that this is a bad knee and I'm gonna go ahead and bring my right knee down to the pad and then shift back up so that I'm putting the pressure on this leg. And then we're gonna come back through the hip hinge. So I've got my hands on the chair, one leg is out to the side, and then I'm gonna go ahead and lift the other leg up, coming through the hip hinge and lift myself the rest of the way up to standing. Let's talk about a third way to get down to the floor. This particular method is a way to get down to the floor without putting any pressure on your knees. Um, it does make use of some props, and I really encourage you to, if you want to use this method, I encourage you to buy a wide child stool, something that you would put in front of either a bathroom or a kitchen sink so that a child could reach. You want a stool that's wide enough for both your, your bottom and your hands to come down. The process that we're going to go through is to lower ourselves from the chair to the stool and then down to the floor. My children have finally gotten big enough and I don't have a stool. So I have rigged up this crazy setup to demonstrate conceptually um, the, the general idea of, of how to do this. I have an aerobic step with yoga blocks. I don't recommend this. A stool would be much narrower and much easier to navigate. But conceptually, so you have the right idea, you're gonna bring your hands down to the sides of your chair and then lift yourself down to your stool. And then with your hands on your stool, you're gonna bring your feet out a little bit further and lower yourself the rest of the way down to the floor. And then from here, you can take this scooting approach. So you could then shift over onto your side if you wanted to clean something or to pick something up, or if you wanted to do some exercises while you're down here and actually lay all the way down on your back, you could do that from here. So in order to get up using this method, you would roll over onto one side and lift yourself up into a seated position. And then we're going to take the scooching approach of scooching your bottom across the floor to get back over by our stool and chair setup. So from here, bringing hands to your stool Lift yourself up and then bringing your feet back in and then from here bringing your hands to the chair and then you'll lift yourself the rest of the way up, bringing yourself back into a seated position. Next, let's talk about some exercises that you can do to make getting up and down from the floor easier to do. So let's go over several exercises that you can do that will make it easier to get up and down from the floor. So the first exercise is a plank at your kitchen counter. Go ahead and place your hands on the counter and then step back. You wanna make sure that your body is staying in a straight line, that you're not sticking your bottom out and also that you're not swaying back. By keeping your body in a straight line, then your tummy muscles will engage and start working. And engaging your tummy muscles is going to actually help to improve your balance, which will make it easier to get up and down from the floor. And strengthening your tummy muscles as an added bonus here, it's also going to help to provide long-term support for your spine, which will strengthen your postural muscles. So this is another bonus worth mentioning. You wanna work on holding your plank, starting out just a few seconds maybe, and then gradually working your way up to holding your plank for about 30 seconds. Then you can just step your feet in when you're done. The second exercise that we're going to do is either a small squat or coming into, in yoga teacher language, it would be coming into upward chair pose. So to do this, face your counter, place both hands on your kitchen counter, stepping your feet back just slightly so you have room to bend your knees. And then with feet, at least hip width apart, maybe slightly wider, depending on what feels right in your body. Go ahead and bend your knees, making sure that your knees track out over the middle of your feet. And while holding yourself up here with the kitchen counter, coming into a squat like this or into upward chair pose, 
The benefit of doing this is that it's going to strengthen your lower body, which will make it easier to get up and down. Specifically, we're strengthening legs and glutes. And having strong glutes also provides long-term support for your spine and postural muscles, which helps to reduce the risk of having compression fractures. So it's a major win. The third exercise that we're going to do is heel drops at the kitchen counter. Place your hands on the kitchen counter and then rise up onto the balls of your feet and drop down. As you rise up and drop down, the impact is good for bones. And if you choose to hold this position, staying on the balls of your feet, it actually helps to strengthen knees. So strengthening your knees will help with any knee related issues and will help to make it easier to get up and down from the floor. And also, if you choose to take one hand or both hands off, you can turn this into a balance exercise, which will also help to further reduce your risk of having a fall and a fracture. I hope the information in this video is helpful for working on being able to get up and down from the floor. Getting up and down is not easy, but it is worth working on. In the description for this video, the reference that I used is also listed. Please feel free to check it out for yourself. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. I look forward to talking with you soon.